Linear algebra, why? Obviously, it is in gate syllabus. That's why we are studying, right? Now, what do you think? Why? What is the other reason we are studying? So, the other reason is that obviously the interviews and it if you look beyond the interviews if you look beyond the uh, gate syllabus or everything obviously we will not be covering i'm just telling you that it is also very very helpful in understanding the data interpretation so uh, for example let me just tell you uh, one example here let's suppose you have any data whether it is text data whether it is video data whether it is audio data whether it is uh, it is number data whatever it is okay that can be represented in a matrix so any data that you have any data can be represented in the matrix form. What do I mean by that? So you have any data, you can represent that data in a matrix. For example, if I just ask you how you will be representing I am Sachin, this sentence, this sentence is one text data. Let's suppose this is one, one text file that I have a.txt. This is one text file that I have, which is a.txt. How you are going to represent this as a matrix? Can you tell me? Yes, the answer is very much um, uh, known for the machine learning practitioners. The answer is that every every word in the machine learning basically get represented using a vector. Okay, so I will be representing I using a vector, M using a vector, and Sachin using a vector. Using these three vectors, I will be writing these three vectors here, and I will be saying that I can represent I am Sachin in uh, in in a matrix format. So anything, okay, whether it is text data, whether it is video data, whether it is audio data, whether it is image, whether it is a, um, whether it is a time series data, whether it is a number data, whatever it is, you can represent that in the matrix format. I'm just giving you one example that how you can represent the text data. Similarly, you can definitely represent the audio data or like, I mean, there are many ways uh, and, uh, to represent the audio data, like uh, to come up with the vectors, but you can definitely represent any data in the vector, uh, in, the, in the matrix. And once you have, once you have the data in the matrix, then everything, everything that you do on this matrix is basically linear algebra. I mean, the combination of linear algebra plus probability and any application which is the machine learning application you do on top of this matrix is basically backed up with the linear algebra and probability concepts so you will be do applying the ml no doubt but those those concepts of ml will definitely be backed up with the linear algebra and probability concepts so that's the power of linear algebra and probability whatever you are seeing i mean you must be seeing chat gpt route right so chat gpt is also a machine learning model or deep learning model and that that must be using linear algebra and probability uh, probability because uh, without linear algebra and probability machine learning cannot even exist so let me just quickly walk you through few of the basic terms then we will solving the gate p by q then you will get to know that how you can easily solve the gate p by q if you have the depth of understanding of these subjects so what is a scalar just let let me just get started with the scalar what is a scalar a scalar is any number let's suppose three if i write then this is a scalar let's suppose two i write that's, that's a scalar let's suppose minus five i write that's a scalar zero is a scalar a scalar is any number right now similarly if i ask you what is a vector then you will say a vector is looking like this something like this is a vector this is a vector right this is a vector okay uh, does this suffice uh, to me? No. Let me just uh, let me just give you some examples. Suppose you have some coordinate system, which is x and y. This is a coordinate system system you, you have. Now in this coordinate system, let me say that there is a coordinate which is two comma three, right? Now there are different ways to represent this two comma three. One is that you represent using just like this, which which is also very fine, which we used to do uh, during our uh, you know. I can say uh, d during our uh, high school classes, maybe we used to represent like this. And then we went to uh, college, then, then we used to say that, okay, let's just represent this vector using, uh, using something like this, right? So both are fine. I mean, either you represent a vector just like a coordinate system, just like this, or maybe you represent a vector just like an arrow, right? Both are perfectly fine. So you can represent a vector just like a coordinate, or you can represent a vector just like an arrow. Both are perfectly fine. Let me know if that makes sense to all of you. So I hope the vector definition is clear to everyone. So this is how the vector look like. Now let me tell you how does a vector look like in R2. Okay. Which means let's suppose you have some vector. Then if I just say that this vector is in R2, it means it has the two dimension, two or three, two, uh, I mean, uh, one or two, which means either you can, you can represent this vector just like this, which means one comma two. Maybe you can say this is, uh, this is in the vector format one, two, right? So these are the two notation that you use. You use this notation, this notation does not matter to us, but for our purpose, for our linear algebra, this looks pretty, pretty nice. 
you might not be agreeing with me that white is looking nice you you may say that this is looking nice but i will convince you very soon that this is the only vector that makes sense i mean that looks nice to us which means it is most convenient to write a vector in the on the column format not in the row format i mean you can write it but uh, generally we write it in the column format okay so this is the vector that we call is in two dimension two dimension means r2 now similarly if i ask you that there is a some vector maybe 1 2 3 or something like this this 1 2 3 this vector is in which dimension then can anyone tell me this is in r n so what should i write here r power 3 r power 4 r power 2 r power uh, like r power 1 what should i write here can anyone uh, quickly tell me let me know so obviously it will be r2 yes right it will be r2 sorry r3 <laughs> it will be r3 Now let me ask you one more question, which might be tricky, but it's a very easy question. Let's suppose if I just ask you zero one zero, or maybe zero. Uh, okay, let me just give you one two zero. This this vector is in is in which dimension? This vector is in R two or R three? Because because remember one of the one of the coordinate is zero. This vector is in which dimension? This this is also an R three, right? Does not matter if what is the value of these uh, these coordinates. Could be zero, could not be zero, but it is having the three three dimensions. I mean three coordinates. It is an R three. Now you know what is a vector in R two, R three. Similarly, you can easily tell me what is a vector in R n. R n means if it is having n n n coordinates, right? One two three like that. If it is having n coordinates, let's suppose the last one is x n. Then I say. Okay, I mean this is x1, this is x2, this is x3, and last one is let's suppose xn. Then I say this vector is in R Rn. Cool. Now you know what is the vector. I mean, how does the vector representation look like? Now let me let me just go through a very quick definition, which is scalar times vector. If you do a vector and scalar multiplication, then how does it look like? Let's suppose there is a vector which is two three. If you multiply this vector by any scalar, maybe two, okay, or maybe maybe five or anything. Let's suppose you multiply that by two, then you know that this will look like four comma six, right? Four six. So that's how you can multiply a, a scalar and a vector. Very easy multiplication. Now let me just tell you how does a two vector addition look like, okay? Which means if you want to add two vectors, maybe one two three, and another vector could be two zero nine, then. How you will add it? You will be adding it dimension wise, which means one plus two is three, and two plus zero is two, nine plus three is twelve. So that's how very easily you can add it. So that's that's how the vector addition look like, right? Now you might be wondering that why I'm telling you all of this elementary stuff because you you might think that it it is elementary, but I mean for you it might be elementary, but for some of the people who are not from the computer science or mathematics background, for them uh, for those this elementary is also required. So that's why I'm going step by step, but we will go to the depth that is uh, that is sufficient enough for gate or sufficient enough for any interview that you are looking for after the gate, obviously not for the interviews. Specialized interviews like machine learning interviews. For that, you have to obviously study the machine learning. But for particularly uh, like IIT or IIC inter uh, or IIC interview, you will definitely be getting all the things that are required there. So, if you want to add, let's suppose these two vectors, you can definitely add. Now, this seven comma seven will look something like this, right? So here, this is let's suppose four. So seven seven comma seven will will be like uh, will be here. Let's suppose. So I think I have the diagram. Okay, I do not have the diagram, but uh, seven comma seven will will look something like this. So this will be the seven comma. Let's suppose, right? You can also draw the seven comma seven. So there is a rule. I mean, using which you can also find out the dimension of uh, direction of seven comma seven, but it's not required, right? I mean, you you might be knowing the triangle rule and cool. Let's move further. Now let's go to the first interesting topic, which is linear combination of the vectors. What do I mean by that? Suppose you have two vectors and you want to have the linear combination of the vectors. For example. Let's suppose you have these two vectors, and these two vectors linear combination. You want to find out linear combination means you want to multiply this vector by some scalar, maybe three. You want to multiply this vector by some scalar, maybe two, and then finally you want to know what is the number. I think uh, what is the vector that you are that you are getting. So I think you can do it because this is the scalar multiplication. This is another scalar multiplication, and finally you will be getting a vector addition. So that's how you will be doing it. That is called linear combination of these two vectors. Now. See here, this is one vector. This is another vector. Now these coefficients could be anything. For the linear combination, I will say the co any coefficients will will create one linear combination of these vectors, right? So you can definitely find out the linear combination of the vectors like this. Okay. Now slowly the things will become more and more interesting. Now you can have any scalar as I said here, like you can have minus one, not five, ten, or anything, and you can definitely find out the number that I that I have completely trust on you guys. So if I just ask you to find out the linear combination of these three vectors, then can you do it? I think everyone can do it. But I will flip this question in a uh, in a opposite way in just a while, and the whole story will change. So 
Oh, now let's keep it very simple. If you have given a vector, you you are given some scalar, and they they are asking you to find out the linear combination of some vector for for these three vectors. So probably if you do it, uh, you do it, then you will be you will be definitely getting. Sorry, I mean let's suppose this is one to ten that you are getting here. Okay, let's suppose this is one one to ten that you are getting here. So that's how you can you can definitely find out the linear combination of the vector. Okay, not this is not one to ten. Uh, this is I think uh, okay. I can I can even do it. Four. Okay, this is one to ten only. Cool. Uh, this is one to ten. Uh, three plus four seven plus two plus two five this is nine. Anyway, nine. This is minus six minus six uh, minus eight. Okay, so this is one to nine. Cool. So this is one to nine, not one to ten. Anyway, you can you can definitely find it out. Now, let's suppose that if I if I give you this this combination, which means I give you everything, I I I I give you this scalars, I give you the vectors, and I ask you for the linear combination, then you can definitely do it, right? There should not be any problem in this. Now, if I just flip this question, very soon we will be flipping this question. Okay, so suppose this is nine or ten, does not matter. So very soon we will be flipping this question. I will be not be giving you the coefficient. And I will be giving you everything. See earlier, I have not given you this this thing, which is very easy to compute, right? Very easy to compute. You can definitely find out this linear combination. But now, very soon, we will be flipping the question, and whole of the linear algebra is revolving around it. This is called a x equal to b. How it is called a x equal to b? I will relate it to a x equal to b. But yes, this is called a x equal to b, and they are asking for the x. They are asking for the x. Similarly, I am asking for these coefficients. So all of this is basically the same story. We will relate it, right? Now let's just move further. And very soon I will come to this again. Remember this, okay? <laughs> Remember this that I am asking for the linear combination. It is just, uh, I mean, it is just you know uh, class class five thing, or maybe class ten thing, class ten thing. Then, then after you know after some time, very soon I will be jumping to this, which is basically class uh, maybe a B tech B tech thing or engineering thing you can say, right? I mean gate thing. So basically, I am currently here, but I will be jumping to this, and and before that, I need to cover some of the basics. So that's why I am not jumping directly. So let's cover some of the basics. Now you know what is a vector in R two, what is a vector in R three, what is a vector in R n. What is a vector means you know how does it look like? It looks like this. Here it looks like this, right? Here it looks like the n dimensions. So that's how the vectors look like, right? And n, n dimensions. Cool. Now. This is the dimension of this vector is two. Similarly, the dimension of this, this vector is is what three, right? You have already answered this that this is in R three. Cool. Now, what is the dimension of this vector? I think this also you already answered, which is R three. Now, uh, let's get started. Before that, I just want to phrase one sentence from very popular book, which is saying that this general introduction to scalars and vectors seems very simple, but you may be surprised to learn that nearly. All of the linear algebra, all of that, whatever we have just studied, okay, just in ten minutes, all of this linear algebra is built from those scalars and vectors. Literally, all of the linear algebra is basically just you know uh, linear combination of the vectors. That's all. From the humble beginnings, okay, we are starting with very humbly, to the amazing things are going to emerge. Just think of everything that you can like. This is just analogy that this book author is saying. Just think of everything you can build with wood planks and the nails. Like wood planks is just a wood, and nails means like you know the nails, right? So uh, just just think of it that you can uh, what you can build with the wood planks and and the nails, a everything, even even the houses are created using the wood planks and nails. Everything, every, any furniture, houses, and you you can even build the buildings using the wood planks and nails. Just like it, like you can build the whole linear algebra using just uh, uh, using just these scalars and vectors. Okay, so let's just continue now. The very first topic that we are going to study is what is the linearly dependent vectors and what is the linearly independent vectors. Okay. For example, if I just give you these two vectors, tell me are these two vectors are linearly dependent or these two vectors are linearly independent? What do you think? Sorry, let me go to that slide. Yeah. So what do you think? These two vectors, which I have shown in the in the in the slide, which are linearly dependent or independent? Okay, so 
you can very easily see that these two vectors are linearly dependent. How? Because one of the vector is basically a multiplication of another vector, which means you will say that this 2, 4 is a multiplication of uh, two times of this vector. So that's what the linearly dependent vectors are saying. Basically two, two vectors, okay? Basically this vector, this linearly dependent, uh, dependent vector is defined for the set of vectors. If a set is having just two vectors, it is very easy. If among two vectors you want to find out, just check whether using a linear combination or using a scalar multiplication, you can, you can get the another or not, right? So if, if I'm just asking whether these two vectors are linear, linearly dependent or not, you, you can very easily come up with the answer that by just checking manually that, okay, this, uh, this two is, uh, two is basically two into this. And similarly, this four is two into this. That's why these are linearly dependent. Suppose instead of this 4, if I just have 5, then what will your answer? Let me know. Instead of this 4, if I just have 5, then are these linearly dependent vectors? No, right? These are not linearly dependent vectors. So I will say that you can very easily just if the two vectors are given, then you can very easily find out whether these linearly dependent or independent vectors, right? But let's, uh, let's go to, you know, maybe more than, uh, more than two vectors. So if you have two vectors, then I think you can very easily find out whether these are linearly independent or dependent. And if you have more than uh, more than two vectors, then let's just see how we are going to do it. So before that, this property of linearly dependent and independent is defined for the set of vectors. Okay, it's defined for the set of vectors, which means don't say, don't come come to me and don't ask me whether this one, two, four, or whatever the vector you have in your mind, whether this is a linearly dependent vector or not. Okay, I mean don't ask me for a particular vector. Don't ask me for a particular vector. Ask me for a set ask me for a set of vectors okay and then i then i will tell you the answer so let's just build the basic step by step so suppose if i give you these three vectors and if i ask you whether these three vectors are linearly dependent or independent by your intuition what do you think till now i have not given you any method but what your intuition what do you think whether these three vectors are linearly dependent or independent let me know Okay, so these two vectors, these three vectors are linearly in, uh, what, what is your answers? Let me just check. Uh, Varun is saying not, uh, independent. Okay. Abdul is saying independent. Subhadib is saying dependent. I Dangerous cloud is dependent. Anamaka is saying dependent. Cool. Ankit dependent. Okay. Few of the people are saying dependent. Few of the people are saying independent. Okay. I do not care what you are saying. Reason being is that I have not told you the method. Like how to check. I have not told you how to check. So I am not expecting you the answer, but just using the human intuition, I just ask you anyway, whatever is your answer does not matter to me. Let me just tell you whether these are linearly independent or independent. What you will be doing, you will be just, I mean, till now, since I have not told you any method, what you will be doing, maybe you will be just doing hit and trial. You will be just checking whether one of the vector, which is let's suppose three, six, 10, whether this is a linear combination of other vectors or not. Since you found out that, okay, the, this vector is a linear combination of these two vectors. It's just a summation of these two vectors. That's why this vector, is can we represented as a linear combination of these two vectors that's why what will i say can i say this vector is linearly dependent should i say this this vector is linearly dependent tell me is this vector linearly dependent is this correct saying that this vector is linearly dependent since this vector can be represented using the linear combination of these two vectors Answer is no. See, for a particular vector, we do not define these terms. I will say this set is linearly dependent, right? This set is a linearly dependent set. This set is a linearly dependent set of vectors. Why? Because, see, till now I have not told you method, but yeah, like I just checked it out that, okay, this vector is a linear combination of these two vectors. That's why these three vectors are linearly dependent vectors. What will I say? That I will say that these three vectors, not, not just one vector, okay? Or not just two vectors. I will say this set of vectors or these three vectors, Right. I will say these three vectors, three vectors are linearly dependent. Let me know if that is clear to everyone. That's, that's just a basic definition that we are building upon. Okay. Now let's, let's go to this where, wh what I'm saying that instead of representing this vector, okay. Instead of representing this vector as a linear combination of these two vectors, I can definitely represent this vector also. You, you, you might want to transfer or you might want to send this, this vector here and there will be a minus sign, right? So I can definitely represent and there will be a minus sign here. So you might, you might want to represent this vector. Does not matter. I can represent uh, maybe, maybe this vector also. I can represent this vector also, right? So if you can represent this vector, then probably I can represent this vector also, this vector also. I mean, just that plus minus symbol, right? Cool. So now, 
सपोज सपोज आई से दैट देर इज वन वैक्टर वेयर वेयर आई हैव दिस सेट ओके सपोज हेयर instead of instead of the set that i had earlier let me just remove it uh, remove it for now and let me show you that what i mean to say instead of the vector that i just shown you earlier suppose if this is the set of vectors that i have now tell me whether these three set of vectors are linearly dependent or independent earlier i used to have 10 here to be to, to, to be just recalling i am telling you now i have 9 here now tell me if i have 9 here then these set of vectors are linearly dependent or independent Dangerous Cladi is asking that what is the way to decide? I will tell you the way. Don't worry. Let's let's be with me, okay? I will not skip even a single thing. I will tell you that how to check. Basically, you need to put all of this vector in a in a matrix. Then you need to check the rank. Okay. So what do you think? These set of vectors are linearly dependent or independent? These set of vectors are still linearly dependent. How? Because you have one of the vector which is three six nine. You have this vector which is three six nine. You can represent this vector as a linear combination of other vectors, which means you can represent three into one two three, and then plus zero into two four seven, right? Can you represent at least one of the vector? I am not saying maybe all of the vector. You can represent this vector which is three six nine as a linear combination of other vectors, right? So let's go step by step. <coughs> Given a set of vectors. i can represent one of the vector which is 369 and as a, as a linear combination of other vectors now there are few questions that i want to ask uh, uh, i want to answer one question is that here if i am representing this vector as a linear combination of other vectors now this 3 is okay to me suppose this is okay to me is this 0 okay i mean can i have 0 as a as a as a scalar which means what i mean to say let's suppose there is one vector okay that i am representing as a linear combination of two vectors then what should be the coefficients that's my question which means can i have can i have a zero coefficient can i have a non zero coefficient like that so earlier in earlier example this was a 3 and this was zero are these coefficient acceptable to me if i am having 3 zero can i say that these three vectors are linear dependent so the answer is yes okay answer is yes just listen here carefully that these coefficients does not matter to me i will come to the formal definition i will i will build all the basic blocks just in a while but just be with me let me let me go in my way because i know that how you will be getting getting to it right so here the first thing that i'm telling you is that that you represent any of the vector as a linear combination of other vectors and good thing is that coefficient does not matter to me which means that this 3 this 0 this coefficient does not matter to me which means coefficients could be zero could be non zero could be could be zero or non zero let me know if that is fine to everyone so coefficients could be anything right now now okay so what i'm doing i have a vector which is this i'm representing this vector as a linear combination of other vectors and then i'm saying that this coefficients could be anything then if i can do it okay let's not worry about the coefficient if i can do it then i will say that this set of vectors are linearly dependent vectors so now i hope the definition is making little little sense and i will i will just you know uh, compile all of all of the things that the, whatever i'm i'm saying but for now let me just know if these things are making little sense which means i am i am saying here that if i can represent if i can represent just one of the vector okay if i can represent just one of the vector as a linear combination of other vectors then the set of vectors is linearly dependent let me know if this is clear to everyone if i can represent just one of the vector as a linear combination of other vector which means here i have represented this vector as a linear combination of other vectors now some of you might be thinking that this is not important for gate or this is important for gate let me tell you that you you have no idea that what is important for gate and what is not important for gate so whatever as i as i put the disclaimer earlier that whatever i am going to teach here is not anything which is beyond gate or not important gate 
बिकॉज आई वैल्यू योर टाइम एंड आई नो वेदर इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर गेट और नॉट मोर देन वॉट यू नो ओके सो बिकॉज आई हैव द एक्सपीरियंस आई नो द सब्जेक्ट आई आई हैव क्रैक द गेट एंड आई नो आई नो फार मोर देन देन वॉट वॉट यू नो द वेदर इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर गेट और नॉट जस्ट बिकॉज यू हैव नॉट स्टडी द लीनियल जब इन द वे दैट आई एम टीचिंग और इन द इन दिस वे दैट इट डजेंट मेक मेक इट लेस इंपॉर्टेंट ओके आई विल रिलेट ऑल ऑफ दिस कंसेप्ट टू वन वेरी पॉपुलर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इन लीनियल जेबरा इन गेट सिलेबस विच इज ए एक्स इक्वल टू बी एंड वंस यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस लीनियर कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ द वैक्टर्स दैन ए एक्स इक्वल टू वी विल बी जस्ट अ केक वॉक फॉर यू ओके दिस इज जस्ट अ बाई प्रोडक्ट आई मीन दिस इज जस्ट दिस इज जस्ट यूजिंग अ फंडामेंटल थिंग्स विच आर हेयर सो लेट मी नो इफ दिस डेफिनेशन इज मेकिंग लिटिल सेंस टू यू आर नॉट राइट सो वट आई एम सेंग हेयर इज दैट If this particular thing, which means any of the vector, is a linear combination of other vectors, now coefficients I do not care whether it is three zero, I do not care. Then it, this set is a linearly dependent set. So let's make this more interesting. Let me let me ask you one more question. Can you represent? Can you represent this vector as a linear combination of other vectors instead of this vector? See what I did here. I just represented the three six nine as a linear combination of other vectors. Now my question is this: that can you represent this vector as a linear combination of other vectors? Maybe some of you can do it very easily, and you you people will say that yeah, there is nothing in this. Okay, I don't want to rotate it, so you will say there is nothing in this. What you what you just need to do, you you will probably write it here, which is this one two three, and then you will be writing. uh you will probably i think doing this uh, there which is 369 1 by 3 369 and then this will be just a zero right so yeah you can definitely represent this vector as a linear combination of other vectors this vector i mean you have represented w as a linear combination of other vectors you have represented v as a linear combination of other vectors sorry not v u right you have represented u as a linear combination of other vectors right this is w This is you. You have represented u as a linear combination of other vectors. Let me just ask you one last question: That can you represent v as a linear combination of other? Vectors? Can you represent? Can you do two four seven equal to something something at something plus something? Which means earlier, if I wanted to represent this, I can divide by three. But if you want to represent this, then can you divide by zero? Right? You need to divide with this coefficient. It seems like you cannot in this case probably right. So if you cannot represent this vector as linear combination of other vectors, then it doesn't mean that this uh, this set is linearly independent or something see the definition is very clear if you can represent at least one vector okay if you can represent at least one vector as a linear combination of other vectors at least one vector you need this is extremely important to be very honest because once you study ax equal to b you will get to know that here the trivial and non trivial solutions are just are just coming from this definition that you can represent at least one vector at least one means you can represent w i am done with it okay i do not even need to even care whether you can represent u or not and can you represent v or not i mean i do not care you may represent you may not represent it it, it does not make make my linearly dependent set as independent or vice versa which means if i can represent at least one vector then this set is linearly dependent let me know if we are settled upon this definition or not so if there is a set right let's suppose u v w anything right maybe um other vectors uh, how they look like maybe pqr should be a good name what do you think a pqr may be a good name not so good but what can i do if i do not have uh, much alphabet so <laughs> so let's say pqr then then i will say that if i can represent just at least one vector okay if we can represent at least one vector as a linear combination of other vectors then this set is linearly dependent see i am i'm emphasizing this too much because because i need you to understand this because if you do not understand this you will not get to know much things right so if you can represent at least one vector this is important now let's just understand this for 15 to 20 more minutes okay i am just going to spend 15 more minutes just with the different different examples with the different different way of looking of the same thing so that you understand it very clearly that what do i mean by that and then we will be solving there is one aimt one question do you remember there was one aimt one question related to this then we will be solving that question let me first go through all the basic of the things right of the linearly dependent and linearly independent now 
Suppose you have this configuration and I will just ask you, do you have at least one vector that you can represent as a linear combination? If you can, if you can tell me, yes, I have at least one vector. Let's not worry about the coefficient. Okay. Whether it is zero, it is non-zero. Let's not worry about it. If you have at least one vector, then we are good to go. So Shyam is asking, sir, what is the range of coefficient to represent linear combination? Range is nothing. It should be the, just a linear, uh, just a uh, real number. That's all. Right. Okay. Now. Let me give you this, these three vectors Maybe strange looking, but, uh, but this will make you, uh, make your uh, concern very strong. Okay. So suppose if I have three vectors, can you represent these three vectors as a linear combination of some other vector? I mean, uh, can you represent at least one vector as a linear combination of other vector? If you try doing this V, then V is a two into this seems like it is two into this, but here it is not right. It should be three, nine and here it is not. Can you represent any one of the vector? As a linear combination of other vectors, if you're representing V, then tell me what are the coefficients. Okay. Tell me what should I write here? What should I write here? If you're representing V. Similarly, if you're representing W, w then tell me what should I write here? What should I write here? Similarly, if you're representing U, then tell me what, is, what should I write here? So let me know what is your answer. If you can represent, then let me know what are the coefficient and what is the equation basically, right? If you cannot represent, that's fine. And if you can represent, let me know. Answer me quickly. What do you think? Yeah, great. So Swadeep is saying W equal to zero into U and plus zero into V, right? So Swadeep has given uh, really a nice answer, which I really like. So that's why I'm just going to put the, his answer in the slides. Okay. So he is saying that uh, W equal to zero into U plus zero into V. And that's correct. That's correct. Because I do not care about these coefficients. Okay. This could be anything. So can I say that this set, this set is a linearly dependent set? Can I say this set, this set, is a linearly dependent set. Then the answer is yes. This set is a linearly dependent set. Why? Because I have at least one vector. See the definition. The definition is that if we can represent at least one vector, which is W in my case, right? See, I have W. I have W in my case, right? I can represent this W as a linear combination of other vectors. That's why I'm saying that this, the, this set of vectors are linearly dependent. I'm just going with the definition that I just told you. Right? Cool. So these set of vectors are linearly dependent. Very nice. Now, since it is a zero vector, I can represent it as a linear combination of other vectors. That's why I'm saying this set of vectors are linearly. So again, UVW, this set of vectors are linearly dependent if and only if there is at least one vector. Okay. There is at least one vector such that the vector is a linear combination of other vectors. Coefficients could be anything. Tell me if this is true or false. A set, a set containing a zero vector is always linearly dependent set. If the set is having a zero vector, which is also AIMT one question. Do you remember the AIMT one question? This was also the AIMT one question. A set is containing a zero vector is always linearly dependent. Tell me fast. Let's, let's not wait for others to answer. Just tell me your answer. Yeah. Thank you, Subhadeep. Thank you, Sikhar. Sikhar is saying, sir, you are very good. Thank you uh, for giving us incredible knowledge. Thank you so much, Sikhar. So everyone is saying true. I'm, I'm very glad to see your answers. So everyone is saying true. So that's why I, I, I can, I can just, you know, uh, paste all of your answers here because all of you are, all of you are saying that this in fact it is right. So this, this thing is actually true. So because I can, if I have a zero vector, then I can represent this as a set of, uh, so, I mean, if I have a zero vector here, then I, I can represent this is zero into any vector I have zero into any vector I have. So that's why this is a linearly dependent set. Tell me, tell me if this is okay. If I have these three vectors, then how will I be uh, able to represent? Then see, I told you that if you have a zero vector, then you can definitely represent with a zero zero coefficient, but there are multiple coefficients are also possible, right? In this case, this is also one of the set of coefficient that I'm having, which is perfectly fine to me, right? So if I have a zero vector, definitely this set is linear dependent. Let's just build this basics more clearly. Suppose I have these three vectors. What do you think? These three vectors are linearly dependent vectors or independent vectors? 
So what you can do, you can try representing these three vectors as a linear combination. So you will, you will say that, okay, this 3, 6, 9 is 3 into this, but 0 into this. That's fine because the coefficients could be anything. But can you represent this vector as a linear combination of other vectors? Can you represent? Maybe, may not be. Like, I, I actually do not know, but it, it looks like you, 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 I mean, you go with this approach, then you will not be able to divide the 0, then you may, may not be, right? Okay. So we cannot represent this as a linear combination of other vectors because this is 0 here. Now, now, suppose if I have this v1 equal to, okay, now I am going with the abstract thing, which means instead of giving me the actual numbers, I am just writing v1, v2, c1, c2, I hope that's fine. Can I represent v2 as a linear combination of other vectors or not? If I just ask you this question, then you will just ask me, in, in, in counter you will just ask me, if I just ask you that can I represent v2 as a linear combination, I am giving you that v1 is a linear combination of other vectors, and if I just ask you can you represent v2, then what you will just ask me? Can anyone tell me what you will be asking me as a counter question? What you will be asking as a counter question? You will be asking that do you have this C2 as 0 or non-zero? Which means if it is 0, then you, you cannot represent. If it is, if it is uh, non-zero, then you can represent, right? So if C2 is non, uh, not 0, then definitely yes. Right? Is this clear to everyone? If C2 is not 0, then definitely yes. Let me know if this is true or this is false. If a set of vectors are linearly dependent, see, once you understand these set of vectors, linearly dependent, independent, then you will automatically be doing this AX equal to 0 very, you know, very trivially. A set of vectors are linearly dependent, then there is at least one vector which we can represent as a linear combination of other vectors, whether it is true or false. Right? This is true. Easy. So that was true. So let me just write it here. This is true. Let me go to the next question. Tell me whether this is true or false. If a set of vectors are linearly dependent, then all, all vectors in that set obviously can be represented as a linear combination of other vectors. Whether this is true or false. Okay, just just think about it carefully. And uh, sorry if I'm uh, just making uh, you know some noise here. But uh, since it is it is in our best of our interest, that's why I'm just saying it. Uh, just uh, like hit the like button. And uh, there are like almost 50 people here and I can just see the <laughs> lesser likes. So just hit the like, like button because then only it will get to recommend other people and that, that will be beneficial for us. If we are putting so much of effort just for you, then we just expect you to do the minimal things which is just hitting the like button or putting some comments. So after this, after this lecture, not here in the live lectures, but after this lecture, uh, once the streaming ended, the live streaming ended, just, uh, just comment it out that you have understood everything. So that uh, later when people come, then it will get to know because many of the videos, uh, videos on our channel are very, very good, too, too good. Just for one hour of the video, we have spent even two days. You do, have you seen the, there is one video of handle? Handle and Bible prefix in compiler design. In compiler design, I have actually spent just two days to understand that handle, and I do not see like more than five, four, five comments. So it really, I mean, do not feel that much nice because uh, for other videos there are many, many comments for other instructors which are even not that nice, and that's why we are just requesting you. Hope you understand. Okay. So now tell me whether this is true or false. Yeah, this is false, right? Because it is saying all. That's why it is false. Now, just to your surprise, you know what, this particular not, not directly in the true false, uh, but I think there was one M MCQ, MCQ that has been asking gate, okay, this same question, same question has been asking gate and they have misinterpreted it and by, by mistake they have written all here, they wanted to write any, okay, uh, they wanted to, to write at least one I think, but uh, I, I do not remember that particular question or the year of that particular question, but the same thing, the same question has been asking gate. In gate p by q do anyone remember uh, that it has been asking gate p by q you might not be uh, able to remember the year currently but do you remember it has been asking gate p by q with wrong interpret it was surprised to me i mean this happens in gate but uh, but yeah that should not happen uh, for these trivial things
Now, suppose if I say that u b w, we are able to represent any of the vector. Is this correct? Is this true or false? If I am saying any of the vector, any of the vector of your choice, can you represent any of the vector of your choice as a linear combination of other vectors? Then answer is no, right? Any of the vector, no. But at least one, then it is correct. Now, I think time has come to solve this gate, uh, sorry, not gate, <laughs> this uh, uh, AIMT, PY, uh, AIM, AIMT questions, previous questions. So this is AIMT1 question, AIMT1. All India mock test, go classes, uh, mock test one question. So what they're asking, let UI is the vectors in RN for I equal to 1 to 4, which of the following options is or are correct? If U1, U2, U3 is linearly dependent, so is U1, U2. What do you think? Let's, let's pick each option one by one and tell me if this option is true. What do you think? If u1, u2, u3 is a linear dependent, so is u1, u2. See, suppose u3 is 0. And u1, u2 are not linearly independent. Uh, not linearly dependent, which means u1 may be u1 may be 1, 2, 3 and u2 may be 2, 4, but at the last it is misbehaving. Maybe let's suppose 2, 4, uh, 2, 4, 7, something like this, right? And u3 is 0, 0, 0. They are linearly dependent or not. Since this is having a 0 vector, then definitely it is linearly dependent. All of this, I mean, this set is linearly dependent set, right? Since they are linearly dependent, then if I remove one of the vector, let's suppose u3, then are these linearly dependent? Then answer is no, right? need not to be. So it is uh, then u1, u2, then need not to be. So it is not always correct. So that's why a is false. Let me know, have you understood this? Take this example where u1 is this, u2 is this and u3 is this. Right? Take this example and let me know if you have understood. Cool. Now, uh, now, okay, uh, now let's go to the next option, which is uh, u4 is not a linear combination. Let's suppose if u4 is not a linear combination of this, then u1, u2, u3, u4 is a linear, is a linear dependent. Let's see this. If u4 is not a linear combination of this, what they're saying that if you cannot represent u4 as a linear combination of this u1, u2, u3, I mean you cannot because u, u4 is not a linear combination, you, so you cannot represent u, u4 as a linear combination of this, then certainly they are saying u1, u2, u3 is a linearly independent. Is this true? Can they, leave, can, can they be linearly dependent? Of course, right? You just have a linear dependency between u1, u2. You do not even care about the u4, which means let's suppose u2 equal to 2u1. Then, then you will say, uh, you will say u2 equal to 2u1 plus 0 into u3 plus 0 into u4, which means you do not care about u3, u4, right? They are saying that if u4 is not a linear, is not a linear combination of th these three, which means u4 cannot be represented as a linear combination of these three, then, then it certainly means that they are linearly independent. No, u1, u2 could be linear dependent because of u1, u2, because just because of u1, u2, the whole thing is linear dependent, right? So that is in option C, I think, right? In option C, they, they, or option D, I think they are talking about this. If the subset is linearly dependent, then the superset is linearly dependent. Yes, that is true. Because adding this U4 does not, uh, does not harm you because you can always have 0 into U4, right? See, whatever earlier, earlier representation you had, and then you can just add 0 into U4 because adding the extra vectors does not harm you. So if this is linearly dependent, so earlier if the, the, that was the linearly dependent, which means something, something into U1 or something into U3, then you can always add U4. So if this was linearly dependent earlier, then adding the vectors does not harm you ever. So that's why D is true. D is true. Any set uh, containing 0, that, that is also true. If u4 is not a linear combination, then, then if, if you cannot represent u4 as a linear combination of these three, then they are saying that you cannot represent others also. No, this is not even the logic, right? I mean, you can definitely represent u1, u2 as a linear combination of each other. That makes the whole set as a linear, linear independent, independent set. Right? Okay, so option D is not clear to uh, to yes, I think, right? So let me just tell you what is the option D. Option D is saying if u1, u2, u3 is linearly dependent, which means if a subset is linearly dependent, then a superset is also linearly dependent. That's what they are saying. If a subset 
इज लीनियरली डिपेंडेंट देन द सुपर सेट इज लीनियरली डिपेंडेंट विच मीन्स If subset is linearly dependent, let's suppose u one, u two, u three. These are linearly dependent. What does this mean? It means it is given. Let's suppose these are linearly dependent. Then what does this mean? Then it means that you have some vector, maybe u one, maybe u two, at least one vector. Basically, you have from this that you can represent as a linear combination of other vectors, right? I mean, I do not care about these coefficients. Honestly, could be zero, could be non-zero. But yeah, this at least one vector here, right? At least one vector can be represent as a linear combination of other vectors. now they are saying can you add in the set can you add u4 also or can you say this is also linearly dependent yes you can add u4 how you will be adding see they are saying can you add u4 also then my my answer is yes how you will be adding you will say that yes you can represent now also you can represent at least one of the vector which is again u2 let's suppose as a linear combination of other vectors put the zero in the u4 right earlier that was the case that was given to you right it was it is given basically right it is given that these are linearly dependent now they are saying can you add one more vector maybe two more vector maybe three more vectors right then they are saying the super set which means adding one more, adding extra vectors does it harm your linearly dependence no it does not harm me because i will always have zero i mean this is just one of the option that i will be having maybe other coefficients also satisfy but i do not care right okay great now uh, now let's just move further which is linearly independence hope you have understood linearly dependence now we will be understanding linearly independence then we will be moving to the gate pi q related to ax equal to b you will not be even realizing that we are solving ax equal to b or ax equal to 0 just using the definition of linearly dependent and linearly independent so the best is yet to come okay the best is actually yet to come let me just go step by step so what is linearly independence fortunately and thankful thankfully this definition is very simple a simple definition is saying that something uh, yeah a set of vector linearly independent if and only if they are not linearly dependent that's the only definition that we have agar wo linearly dependent nahi hai then they are linearly independent or vice versa if and only if means vice versa basically either the set is linearly dependent or the set is independent if this is dependent it cannot be independent if it is not dependent then it is independent basically linearly if you know whether it is linearly dependent or not dependent i mean you know the independence right i mean it is opposite to each other either it is dependent if you say it is not dependent then what does this mean you are saying it is independent right that's all so this is in the layman terms but we will understand it little more carefully so that we can solve the questions like ax equal to 0 and ax equal to b now you might be wondering that how these two things are related but actually the whole of the linear algebra just fall into one place once you understand that how these two things are related let me know if things are clear and we can move further and my voice is clear or not okay is my voice clear cool let's just understand this more carefully that what does this linearly dependence means so what will i give you to Let's suppose I give you this equation to you. Okay, suppose I give this equation to you. What does this equation says? This equation says that this c1, I mean c1 is a scalar. Okay, this ci is a scalar, vi is a vectors. So whenever I write any symbol, maybe alpha, beta, x, y, z, anything I write, then you should always ask me. whether it is scalar or it is vector it is a matrix scalar vector like that you should always ask me although the notations are very uh, i mean uh, very much formulaic systematic which means whenever i use c c i c1 c2 c3 a1 a2 a3 small a1 a2 a3 most no, no not a a generally i use for the vectors also i mean the text was used for the vectors if i use the vi then generally it is for vector it is for scalar if i use capital a maybe capital m then generally it is for the matrix but yeah you should be clarifying that to me okay. you should be asking that question to me whether it is a vector it is a scalar like that right okay so suppose these are the scalar c1 c2 c3 are scalar v1 v2 v3 are vectors and suppose someone give you this equation and then whenever someone give you this equation you just ask me you just ask that person one question you just ask one question which is which is that can you give me can you please help me or can you give me give me at least at least one pi such that such that pi is not equal to 0 which means you are asking just a very simple question to that person that can you give me one ci which is not equal to 
Suppose that person says that yes, I have C1. Okay. Suppose that person says I have C1 is not equal to zero. Okay. C1 is not equal to zero. You will say, oh, great. If C1 is not equal to zero, what will I do? I will represent V1 as a linear combination of other vectors. Maybe you will transfer all of this to that side. Maybe C1, C2, V2, like that, right? If C1 is not equal to zero, then what will you do? You can represent V1 as a linear combination of other vectors, isn't it? So whenever someone gives you, someone gives you this equation, okay, this equation, then you just ask one question. Can you give me one of the, one of the scalar, which is not zero. If you give me, let's suppose C1 not equal to zero, then I will be very happy. I will be just representing, if C1 is not equal to zero, then I will be just representing V1 as a linear combination of other vectors. I mean, I do not care about the coefficients, but yeah, I know that these can be represented by the set of other, something like this, right? But I do not care about the coefficient. Let's not worry. So you can represent V1 as a linear combination of other vectors if C1 is not zero, right? So you can say that you can represent V1 as a linear combination. Of other vectors. Let me know if that is clear. If C2 is not zero, you can represent V2 as a linear combination as other vectors, right? You can represent V2 as a linear combination of other vectors. If C3 is not zero, similarly, you can represent V3 as a linear combination of other vectors like that, right? Okay, great. Now, if someone give you, if someone gives you this kind of, uh, th this kind of equation, which means someone give you this kind of equation, then you will be just asking, can you, can you help me with at least one CI? If you just help me at least one CI, I can represent that vector as a linear combination of other vectors. So that's all. Now, it means that if someone help you with actually at least one CI, okay, which means you ask, you ask that person, do you have at least one CI? Do you have at least one CI, which is not equal to zero? You just ask a very, very simple question. Okay, n nothing, nothing very fancy. Just ask, just a very simple case question. Can, can you help me with uh, just one CI, which is not equal to zero? And and this is very powerful, a powerful thing actually you are asking to that person. Let's suppose the person is saying, oh, sorry, uh, I cannot help you. Okay, maybe the person is, sorry. I cannot help you, I cannot give any CI which is not equal to zero, which means all of the CIs are actually zero, which means all of CIs. So let's suppose the person is saying that C all of the CIs are equal to zero. I cannot help you with any, any CI which is not zero. Okay. It means you cannot represent any vector. You cannot represent VI. Can you represent VI? No, because this coefficient is also zero. So that's why you cannot divide the zero, right? So it means you cannot represent any vector as a linear combination of other vectors. See, if C1 is not equal to zero, let's oh, sorry, C1 is, uh, C1 is zero. Okay. C1 is zero. Then it means what? Can you represent V1? No. If C2 is also 0, can you represent V2? No. If C3 is also 0, they are, I'm saying if everything is 0, can you represent any of the vectors as a linear combination of other vectors? No. Right? If let's suppose this is not 0, if let's suppose one of them is not 0, you do not care what is that value or everything else is 0, right? Okay. Let's suppose one of them is not 0. Let's suppose C1 is not 0. Suppose C1 is not 0. This is not 0. I hope this is clear. Uh, this writing is clear to everyone. This C1 is not equal to 0. Suppose this C1 is not equal to 0. Then what you will say? If C1 is not equal to 0, I do not care about the other coefficient. Okay. I do not care about the other coefficient. I have at least one vector which is not equal to 0. I will be writing V1 as 1 upon C1 into something. Whatever other coefficients are, I do not care. If C1 is not equal to 0, in this equation, I can represent V1 as a linear component. If, but if everything is zero, if everything is zero, then I will not be able to. Do. It is clear to everyone. Let me know. Right. So I hope that is clear. Okay. So I can see a few of the comments which are saying clear. So I just need to take care of just one non-zero coefficient. If I have one non-zero coefficient, then I can represent that vector as a linear combination of other vector. Now suppose if you ask the same question to some guy and that guy is saying that all of the all of the uh, CIs are actually zero, then you, what you will say? You cannot represent any vector as a linear combination of other vectors. That it means that these vectors are linearly independent. These vectors are linearly independent. Which means if you cannot represent, the definition is very simple. If you cannot represent any of the vectors as a linear combination of other vectors, if you cannot represent 
एनी वेक्टर एज ए लीने कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ अदर वेक्टर then this is linearly independent is this making some sense so what you will do you will just ask given this equation you will just just ask do you have a non zero ci if someone give you some non zero ci you can represent that vector let's suppose they give you c1 not not equal to 0 you can represent v1 as a, as a linear combination of other vectors if they give you c2 not equal to 0 you can represent uh, v2 as a linear combination of other vectors similarly if they give you, they give you c3 non zero you can represent b3 but they say no everything is zero then can you represent anything no right so that's why these vectors are linearly dependent if they give you some ci then they linearly Sorry, uh, if they give you some CI, then linearly dependent. If they if they give you if they say that all of the CIs are zero basically, then then you can not represent. Then it means they are linearly independent. So let me go step by step. Don't worry, right? What will I do? I will give you this equation. I will just ask you. You you just ask me basically. C one is zero or not? I say okay, it is not zero. You are very happy. You can represent V one. Like. At least is this is this slide clear? Don't worry about whatever I have told till now. Okay. Just take a breath and let me know if this slide is clear. Meanwhile, let me also drink the water. And I will clarify this thing because this is very, very, very much related to a x equal to b, which is the core of linear algebra, as per the gate syllabus. And not just a gate in the interviews and and these things, they will just they will be just asking you these things, right? So I have got many messages after the gate. I have got many uh, feedbacks after the gate that they are just saying that whatever we have uh, we have taught, uh, like you have taught in the LA class, they have just asked the same thing. And actually, this is just a just a linear algebra at the you know core level. If you do not just buy hard some formulas, if you just try to understand that with the core level, that this is the linear algebra that uh, th that you should be studying. Okay. So it's really nice to see that you people can answer this. So now you understood this slide at least, right? If C1 is not zero, then you can represent V1. Cool. Now, similarly, if they give you at least one of the CI which is not zero, then can you represent this BI? Let me know. Let me know if you can represent that BI. Obviously, yes, right? Represent means that linearly dependent. So when I am saying, can you represent? Can you represent that VI? Can you? represent actually i am just asking whether it is linearly dependent i mean represent if you can represent then it is linearly dependent set right represent means the, the moment you represent it is linearly dependent right the moment you represent the moment you say that this is the equation that exists in my uh, in, in my set of vectors then these set of vectors are linearly dependent right the coefficients could be anything see again the coefficients could be anything i do not worry about the coefficients so if someone gives you this equation then you just ask me Can you give me one CI? If they give you one CI, you can represent linearly independent. They are not able to give you any of the CI. You cannot represent they are linearly uh, independent. If you can represent dependent, right? So just see this slide, which is very very important. They will they they will give you this equation. Then you just ask me uh, ask them, can you give me at least one CI, which is not zero? If they say yes, then tell me what should I write here? Dependent or independent? If they say no, then what should I write here? Tell me one. In in place of one, what should I write? In place of two, what should I write? So if you tell me, then you have understood this linear dependent independent, and I can take at least at least one deep breath that okay, you have understood, and I can at least be very happy. Let me know. Let me know. This one is uh, what should I fill in place of one? What should I fill in? Place? Okay. Uh, there is some issue related to volume. let me know okay now now the volume should not be the issue i i just kept this mic little closer to me By the way, these are the bottles of Go classes that uh, we have actually 
I mean ordered uh, so that if you get any top rank in any of our mock test or, or some AIMT all India mock test then we will be just gifting you these bottles. This could be the motivation to appear for all India mock test if that makes sense. Okay, so yes is saying one is linearly dependent and two is linearly independent. Okay. Uh, Alman is saying linearly dependent, two is linearly independent. Cool. Let, let's just see the answers. So many of you have given the correct answer, I think. So if they give you just one CI, right? If they give you one CI, then linearly dependent. If they give you, if they say, no, 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 um, I cannot give you one CI, which it means what? It means what? All of the CIs are zero. All of the CIs are zero, right? Then it means little independent. Let me know this definition is clear to everyone, right? So here little independent, here little independent. See, no means what? They cannot give you at least one CI, which means this equation is getting satisfied. But by putting all of the zeros, right? If you obviously put this as a trivial solution, right? Trivial means like this is obvious solution. Now that if you put everywhere zero, if you put this zero, this zero, this zero, right? Everywhere if you put zero, then definitely you will be getting zero. There is there is nothing uh, fancy in this, right? So which means if if that's the only thing by which you can make the whole equation zero, which means there cannot exist any non-zero CI. You have to put all of them at zero. Then these are linearly independent. Which means that given this equation, okay, given this equation, which means that this equation is satisfying, which uh, I'm not saying that this equation is not satisfying, but the way to satisfy this equation is only one way, which means by putting all of them zero. You put here zero, you put here zero, you put here zero, you put everywhere zero, then only you are coming up with the zero. So then what is the benefit? I mean, if you had to take zero to do this, then what is the benefit of this equation? Ka? Which means this equation is very trivial. So if you have to put all of them zero, that's the only way to make it zero. Then these set of vectors are linearly independent. Right? These set of vectors are linearly independent. See, I don't want to make it complicated, but I want to make it clear. So that's the difference. Uh, like uh, just to uh, avoid uh, making complicated I cannot skip these parts so I want to make it more clear that's why let me just ask you one question and um, unfortunately you all might be wrong in this question I mean you all might say the answer is uh, answer is uh, I mean you 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 all might give you the wrong answer which which is okay to me but uh, uh, then I will explain you okay suppose this equation is given to you and I'm asking directly a formalistic question, which means I'm not hiding any details. The question in the way that they can ask you in the exam. Every detail I'm presenting to you and then you have to decide whether it is true or false. Okay. So suppose that I'm asking true or false. I'm giving you this equation saying a set of vectors satisfy the following equations. A set of vectors, vectors V1, V2, Vn satisfy this where where all CIs are zero I mean CIs are scalar and which are zero then then P1 V2 this set Vn is linearly independent let me know if this is true or false Yes, Rahil. So Rahil saying x equal to zero is uh, in the system of equation is the same. The zero vector is trivial solution. Yeah, that I will connect the dots. Okay, just I'm going to connect the dots. Let me first uh, make it very clear that you have understood the things very, very nicely. Then I will be connecting all the dots. So what do you think? Okay. So that is saying true. Mr. Singh is false. Sunu is just saying false. Everyone, please give me the answer. Do not hesitate to give me the answer. Okay. Okay, just just whatever is coming into your mind because that's the way you will be interacting and that's the way I will be knowing your names that's the way we will be interacting even uh, even after the gate once you get the top rank right so Rajesh is saying true Harish is saying false Anamika true Baba Yaga uh, I mean there's a username which is saying false okay so let's just see if this is true or false this is the exact question suppose that they, that's, that's what they are going to ask 
they are saying a set of vectors are satisfying a satisfying or satisfies or whatever okay satisfy this equation where all ci's are zero then this is linearly dependent actually 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 this this particular this particular statement okay is not telling me anything at all not telling me anything at all why because if all ci's are zero all ci's are zero then anyone any set will satisfy this this equation linearly dependent will satisfy linearly dependent will satisfy what this paragraph is giving to me not telling me any information at all i cannot definitely say it is linearly dependent maybe dependent i do not know right so i will i will connect dots don't worry don't don't think that i am teaching uh, whatever i taught you just now was wrong see if they are saying that this is this this set of equation is uh, i mean this equation is getting satisfied by, by vectors where all ci's are zero obviously everyone can satisfy these this equation right i mean either this is linearly dependent or linearly dependent does not matter to you everyone will be satisfying this 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 equation so this is not telling me any information not driving any information not telling any any anything about the set right this is not telling me anything so what will tell you if they say if they say let me ask you another question so see this is false reason being is this this is not telling you anything first of all okay now let me ask you a question where they will give you some information about the set how they will say a set of vectors satisfying okay so currently it was not telling but let me just modify this this statement little bit and then let me tell you that uh, that it will make some sense then okay suppose they say a set of vectors we want to be and satisfy this equal to 0 okay and and let me just add one one word here satisfy they say the satisfy uh, this where all ci's are zero and then before that if they say this satisfy this equal to zero only when only when all ci's are zero where uh, only when only when all ci's are zero which means they are saying that a set of vectors are satisfying which is good i mean the set of vectors are satisfying these this equation but only when all ci's are zero there is no other solution which means that you cannot have any non zero ci right they are saying that you are having equal to zero only only and only when all ci is are zero which means you cannot have see here they are clearly saying that you cannot have any non zero ci right so it means that here this equation is getting satisfied which is good but now they are saying it, you are satisfying only when all ci is zero which means you cannot have non zero here this is not the possibility you cannot give me any ci which is zero non zero since you cannot give me any ci which is non zero it means all ci are always zero not just for the coincidence not just for this this equation they are always zero i mean if you want to satisfy this equation then this is the only solution all ci are zero is the only solution that's what they are saying you getting my point see what they are saying let me let me just make it more clear see generally if this equation is given to you what do you ask okay do you ask do you have you you just ask one question do you have one ci one non zero ci if they say yes yes you will say great vi can be represented as a linear combination if this is no it means all of the ci must be zero then it means linearly dependent isn't it that's what we have studied till now right that's what we have studied till now now let's just see that what they are saying they are saying that you are satisfying only when all ci are zero which means you are asking a question to that guy do you have at least one ci which is non zero they will say no 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 i can satisfy only when all ci are zero then it means that you are you are saying no 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 and uh, ci is non zero ci does not exist if non zero ci does not exist then you will say linearly dependent earlier earlier i said earlier i said that this is getting satisfied where all ci are zero yeah i mean if i just ask that guy do you have any non zero ci it will say that okay i don't know maybe may, may not be but i know that if all ci are zero then i am satisfying maybe non zero in case of non zero i'm satisfying or not i don't know because they have they are not saying that this is the only solution they are saying this is just one of the solution which is actually trivial solution right so they are saying that this is just one of the solution they are not giving the information about the all the solutions here right they are saying that this is just one of the uh, one of the solution where you put all of them zero you will get the zero great 
right they are not telling me that whether the ci can be non zero or not they are not saying that if they there can be non zero or not but here they are saying clearly saying that there cannot be non zero they are saying only when all of the ci is are zero you getting the difference see what i'm saying here if they give you if they give you any set of vectors okay any sort of set of vectors then you will be asking ci that whether whether do you have one ci do you have one ci if if they say that okay the, this set of vectors the only solution to this set of vectors is the trivial solution right the only solution solution means solution means the values of c1 c2 c3 the only solution to this equation is trivial first of all solution means values of c1 c2 c3 right trivial trivial means that they are zeros right c1 c2 c3 are zeros they are saying only the only solution is that they are zeros then it means that they are linearly independent suppose they say that that the solution to this equation is is uh, is basically the solution to this equation is all ci are zero okay suppose they say the solution to this equation is all ci are zero all ci is zero then can you say linearly dependent or independent see that's that's the very trivial thing they are they are telling to me, to me they are not adding any 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 information to to my knowledge they are saying the solution to this equation is all ci are zero भाई ये तो मुझे ही पता है कि ऑल सी एच जीरो टेल मी कि नॉन जीरो भी है कि नहीं है राइट मतलब ये तो सबको पता है ना कि कि जीरो पुट करने से जीरो आएगा ही आएगा मुझे ये बताओ कि नॉन जीरो से जीरो आ रहा है कि नहीं आ रहा इन विच आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन राइट आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन वेदर यू कैन पुट द नॉन जीरो स्टिल गेट द जीरो इफ यू कैन डू इट देन दिस इज लीनल डिपेंडेंट अदरवाइज इट इज इंडिपेंडेंट इफ यू आर सेंग कि जीरो पुट करने से जीरो आएगा वॉट यू आर टेलिंग टू मी यू आर नॉट टेलिंग एनी इन्फॉर्मेशन टू मी यू आर जस्ट गिविंग यूर ट्रिवियल इन्फॉर्मेशन That the solution to this equation is C I equal to zero. हाँ ये तो पता है मुझे भी पता है right? If you say the only solution, which means कि non zero से नहीं आएगा. अगर मैं इतना sure हूँ कि non zero से नहीं आएगा. See, first of all, this is I cannot say anything. We don't know, right? We don't know. Okay. But अगर वो बोलते हैं कि only केवल zero से ही आता है, non zero से नहीं आएगा. अगर okay? कोई भी non zero रखो तो एकदम बात बिगड़ जाएगी. Non zero से नहीं आएगा. तो मैं श्योर हूँ वो नॉन जीरो से नहीं आएगा मतलब सी आई नॉन जीरो नहीं हो सकता मतलब लीनियर इंडिपेंडेंट है वो बोलेंगे जीरो से आएगा वो तो मुझे भी पता है ना मतलब सबको पता है कि जीरो से आएगा दिस इज वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से राइट तो सारे सेइंग व्हाट इफ सी आई इज आर अल्टरनेट साइन वाई द अल्टरनेट साइन एंड दीज थिंग्स विल मैटर आई मीन यू कैन पुट एनी सी आई द वैक्टर्स कुड भी डिफरेंट है बी वन बी टू बी थ्री आर नॉट सेम आई मीन इट कुड भी एनी थिंग तो एनी ओके आई होप यू आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग let me know if that is clear to you because that's very very important that's why i'm putting so much emphasis on this theek hai samajh mein aaya na matlab koi bhi equation de rahe hame ye pata hona chahiye non zero se aa raha hai ki nahi aa raha mujhe non zero mein interested hai interested hu main zero mein interested hai hi nahi i'm not interested ki iska zero solution hai ki nahi hai mujhe pata hai ki iska zero to hai hi hai mujhe batao non zero solution hai ki nahi hai right agar wo question mein ye bata rahe hai ki iska ek zero solution hai wo to mujhe bhi pata hai मुझे ये बताओ नॉन जीरो है कि नहीं है मुझे ये इन्फॉर्मेशन दो डायरेक्टली इनडायरेक्टली कैसे भी दो बट मुझे ये बताओ कि नॉन जीरो सॉल्यूशन है कि नहीं है राइट सी आई नॉन जीरो हो सकता है कि नहीं हो सकता जीरो हो सकता है वो मुझे पता है भाई यू आर गेटिंग माई पॉइंट तो इफ दे आर सेंग की ओनली सोल्यूशन मतलब वो इनडायरेक्टली नॉन जीरो के बारे में बता रहे कि नॉन जीरो सोल्यूशन नहीं है राइट right? क्योंकि जीरो ही ओनली सोल्यूशन है ओके कुल आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड राइट so uh, let's just uh, see here so if they say only trivial solution is possible which means matlab agar dekho uh, just a last thing i'm i'm telling you last last time i'm telling you ki agar wo kabhi bhi ye question dete hain mujhe zero solution mein interest hai hi nahi hai mujhe batao non zero hai ki nahi hai right i want to know ya fir hindi mein likhu if you are comfortable mujhe ye batao मुझे ये बताओ कि नॉन जीरो को तो मैं इंग्लिश में लिखता हूं ठीक है कि नॉन जीरो है कि नहीं जीरो का मत बताओ जीरो का तो मैं क्या ही करूंगा जान के मतलब जीरो तो बहुत ट्रिवियल चीज है ना मुझे ये बताओ सीआई नॉन जीरो हो सकता है कि नहीं हो सकता डायरेक्टली बताओ इनडायरेक्टली बताओ आई डोंट नॉट केयर राइट 
तो डायरेक्टली इनडायरेक्टली डू नॉट केयर ओके तो सपोज दे गिव यू दिस इक्वेशन दे आर सिंग ओनली ओनली ट्रिबल सॉल्यूशन इज पॉसिबल मतलब नॉन जीरो नहीं आ सकता केवल जीरो ट्रिबल मतलब जीरो ट्रिबल का मतलब होता है जीरो ओके जीरो इफ ओनली 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 जीरो आर पॉसिबल इट मींस दे आर लीनियरली इंडिपेंडेंट ओके कैन यू ओके आई थिंक दिस इज क्लियर एवरी वन नाउ we are about to build uh, build our uh, foundations i mean we are almost done with the foundations with ax equal to b which means now we are about to go for ax equal to b now whatever we have just studied about the linear combination independence dependence this all will be just relating to this ax equal to b so nicely so smoothly that you will not be able to even differentiate that this is this is ax equal to b or or linearly dependent or independent thing that we have just studied okay the so nicely it is going to uh, going to relate but before that let me know if you have any doubt let me know if you have any doubt then we will move further 